Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my updated rune tier list because it's been ages since my last one and a lot of things have changed. A lot of buffs, nerfs, and a lot of new runes. Also, this is going to always be my gear loadout just so it's even testing through all the runes in the background footage. Let's hop right into the F tier and this video will be in order from the lowest tier to the highest. Anyways, at the F tier I have two things tied, both the Void Rune and the Troll Rune, because they do nothing for you, they literally affect no skills. So in terms of actual uh, rune usefulness, they're absolute garbage, however they are worth a lot of money on the marketplace, so I guess you could say they're good for that reason. I have two runes both tied at the D rating, and the first one we'll talk about is Vitality. So the literal only reason why Vitality is not an F is because at least it does something for you. Every time you hit an enemy, you heal back 1% of your HP. I think this is absolute trash because most strategies involve havoc. If you're level 1, this could be somewhat useful, but I literally only suggest you use this thing at level 1. So the other one I have at the D rating is going to be the pumpkin rune because it actually is pretty dang weak when it comes to actually affecting your damage. The only thing it does is visually change sword storm, it doesn't even buff it, and then basically your uh, mending sword becomes the same as ice queens. And that's it. It is worth a lot of money on the marketplace, so I will say in terms of collecting, it is a very great item to get. But in terms of actually using this thing in combat, I would never suggest you use this. It is pretty bad, but it is fun to use just for its aesthetics. So now we're going to hop into the C rating. So the first one I have at C is actually going to be the Rune of the Shadows. So the Rune of the Shadows is very hard to get through crafting, it's a very low drop chance, but it isn't very good. It is not very good at all. So all it does is affects Menacing Shot, which basically makes a big black hole, which pulls all the mobs in, and then Ground Stomp does become pretty dang strong, and also Lure Jab gets changed to just heal yourself, which is not very good, but Overall, I do not think this rune is great. It really could be better. If the ground stomp had a less of a cooldown, this could definitely be a viable DPS rune, but the sheer fact that the ground stomp has a fat 7 or 8 second cooldown makes it pretty ineffective, and overall I do not think it's that good. So the next rune I'm going to put at the C rank is going to be the rune of the blade. This thing has seen its glory days in the past. It used to be great, but in my opinion, it is just not that good anymore. So basically what it does is it affects your basic attack damage by three times and then also sword splitters uh, spinner count increases to three instead of one. The reason why I do not think this is that great anymore is because you have to constantly make sure the enemy boss stays within the sword splitters and overall there is just so many different runes that you could use over this one and get much greater DPS value out of. Now I will say for its level of 100, it is very good at low levels because, well, it increases Sword Splitter by 3, but overall I, there's just so many other things I'd rather use over the Blade Rune. So now we're going to go on to the B tier. There's a lot of B tier since a lot of runes in this game are pretty decent. So the first one I have at B is going to be the Rune of the Flame God, and that's just because, well, again, there is many things I would rather use over this. However, it does do a decent amount of damage, so it affects Acceleration Divider, it does a lot more damage and leaves a over time flame path. Windstorm is also infected, it makes it a lot stronger and you can move faster, and then Shatter basically becomes a big DOT. So overall, this rune is pretty effective at level 400. You definitely can make this rune work in most of the raids. It's just pretty slow, and there's many other options I would rather pick over this one. I can't really have too many complaints about it, other than the fact that it's slow because it's DOT based, but really, it just doesn't shine that much either. So it's not that bad, but it's also not exceptional. So that's why I'm giving it a low B. So the next rune at the B rating is going to be the rune of the battler. So the reason why the rune of the battler I'm putting in a B rating is because it's an extremely situational rune. So its main thing it does is greatly increase the damage of shatter. And then it also affects ground stomp. And then also ground break used to be OP as hell with this rune. Because essentially the less health the enemy has, the more damage it does. But overall, again, there is just many runes I would rather pick over this. Is it good? Yes, if you get this thing at level 400 or 500 and you don't have a Xur or something, definitely use this. You can really make it work because you, you can really make that shatter do a ton of damage. However, 
there is a lot of things I'd rather use because its main ability is that Shatter, which has a very big cooldown. So the next rune I'm going to have at the B rating is the Rune of the Striking. Because the Rune of the Striking you can really make work, but it is super close range, so there's a lot of bosses that it isn't great to use with. So what it does is it increases your da uh, critical damage by three times, and it makes Piercing Strike pretty OP because it has about a two second cooldown and you can spam it and it has decent ish range and as you can see in the background I'm really putting in work with the rune of the striking but the reason why I don't have it higher than a B is because you have to have havoc you have to have calamity and it is pretty risky to use you have to have a good amount of speed so the enemies don't actually kill you but you really can make this thing work you can shred bosses but I would say this is a very situational rune. There's a lot of bosses where you don't want to use this. However, like in the background in the Hive Raid, it is very good in there. The next one I'm going to talk about is going to be the Rune of Life. So the reason why the Rune of Life is all the way up at a B rating is because it's found its way back into the meta. It is exceptional for healing when you have soul runes in your party. Alone, this thing is trash, so in the background, you know I'm not really doing it justice, but it really, really increases your healing output. It does about 500% more range, it does 200% more healing, blessings affected as well. So it is very good at healing your allies and keeping your soul rune players at maximum health for maximum DPS. So the reason why it's at a B is because it is great in team play, but solo it is trash except at low levels. At low levels, in my opinion, this is the best level 1 rune. It is fantastic for level 1. But overall, there's not too much bad to say about it, but it is also not beyond exceptional. The next rune I have at B is gonna be the rune of the ice queen so this might seem a little low to a lot of people but the reason why i have it this low is because there's nothing that exceptional about it however there's nothing bad about it at all it except uh it affects both shatter makes shatter much stronger and it makes mending sword do a lot of damage in a big dot radius so this is the optimal beyond optimal afk rune if you're going to afk farm anything you're going to be using ice queen and mending sword it is a fantastic combination for that but in team play in solo play there's a lot of things i would rather use over it it is a very safe rune to use it will keep you alive and i trust me if you're soloing at this you will not struggle to stay alive but it is pretty slow there is many other options that are quicker than this, which is why I have it at a B rating, because it isn't quite exceptional enough for me to put it at an A, but it really isn't very bad at all. Like, this thing is just teetering on the edge of going up to the A rating. So the first rune I have at the A tier is the Solar slash Lunar. They both do the same thing, same damage, it's just the Solar is the very rare limited version of the Lunar from the Summer 2020 event that looks pretty dang aesthetic. Anyways, the best combination with this rune is of course gonna be Moon Cutters with Havoc and Calamity. You just do so much damage with that, and the reason why I have it at an A rating is because it is a very safe Havoc strategy, because you can do long range Moon Cutter attacks, so you lose health with your Havoc, and you can easily dodge enemies from a distance and just absolutely shred with this. I think this rune is fantastic for solo play, it's good for team play. There are better options than this, that is why it's at the very bottom of the A tier, but there's really nothing that bad to say. It really does put in the work when you use it properly. Also, the other skills affected is Moon Slice and Cyclone. Just in my opinion, the best loadout is definitely the simple Moon Cutters Havoc Calamity. That is where you're going to get your most DPS from this thing. So the next rune in the A category is going to be the Protector slash Egg rune. And again, this is one of those things where the Egg and Protector both do the exact same thing. Just the Egg is a limited reskin version from 2020 April. Anyways, the reason why this rune is at all the way up at the A tier is because it is a staple of hardcore raids like Frost Dragon and EOT. If you are doing a team-based hardcore raid, you're going to be using this thing. And in fact, you're going to have two players use it. It is how you keep your team alive, it is how you keep your team from taking a massive amount of damage, it is a fantastic rune, there is nothing bad about it, I mean in solo play in the background as you can see it's trash, because why on earth would you ever use this in solo play, but in team play it is just so good, safeguard becomes stronger, it affects all of your teammates, and then cloak of light also affects all of your teammates, it helps keep them alive. 
if you're in team play, you always see two protectors or two eggs. It is just a staple of hardcore raids. So the next rune at A, I'm going to have Hurricane. So this one might seem a little weird to people, and I'm sure this is going to be one in the comments where you guys are going to disagree. But the reason why I have this at an A is because its acceleration divider ability is so good it has about a two second cooldown and is beyond spammable and if you combo it with havoc and calamity you can really shred bosses in solo play like i absolutely love this thing it does also affect windstorm and sword splitter but in my opinion ever since they made the acceleration divider have a tiny cooldown on this rune that is when it became the best ability for the rune so I, I just absolutely love this thing in solo play. I, there are things I would rather use over it because it is a little bit risky because you have to go through the enemy boss every single time you use it. And I will say in certain boss fights, this is not viable, but you can really speed run some bosses with this. You just do a ton of damage just because you can spam the ever living hell out of acceleration divider. So the next rune I have at the A rating is going to be the rune of the silencer so the silencer has been around forever it is a staple of team play as well in the background i'm not doing justice because obviously you don't want to solo with it although it's funny i do solo this boss faster with it than pumpkin rune but anyways the reason why it is just so dang good is because it affects lure jab and makes it even stronger and for those of you who don't know what Lure Jab does is it makes the enemy boss weaker, and it basically makes all your allies do a lot more damage on them. It is so dang good. Every single massive raid party group in Hardcore EOT or anything like that is going to be using a Silencer. A Silencer is required for speedruns. It makes boss fights so much easier. There is nothing bad about it. So the next rune I have at the A rating is going to be the rune of light. So this is a very difficult rune to get because you can only get it dropped for like about 150 levels in the archipelago and then after that it becomes limited somewhat. So this one affects heaven splitter and makes it very effective basically a ton of swords come raining down around you and then its main affecting thing is piercing strike and then it also affects cloak of light and makes your basic attack speed faster but the prime combination with this is heaven splitter piercing strike and calamity so this thing is fantastic in team play before the soul rune came out this was the staple of team play in hardcore eot everybody used it and if you're gonna solo something with a safe strategy to where you're not using havoc this is a fantastic rune for solo play as well it might be a little bit slower than something with havoc but you're gonna stay alive and you're not gonna die and that's a very important part of soloing things and if you're gonna solo hardcore eot you better be using this rune so with all of those out of the way, we are going to be hopping into the S tier runes, the absolute best top of the top runes in the game right now. And the first one I'm going to put at that is the Snow Angel. So the Snow Angel is just teetering on A and S, and the reason why I put it slightly above the Light Rune is because unlike the other reskins of runes, the Snow Angel actually is a slightly stronger version of the Light Rune, and that is why I have it at the bottom of the S's. So it does the same thing, Heaven Splitter, Piercing Strike, and Cloak of Light are all affected, but they do a little bit more damage than the Rune of Light does, and that is why it's an S. It is fantastic in solo play, it is untradeable and impossible to get nowadays, so it is pretty, uh, that is pretty unfortunate, but besides that fact, this thing is fantastic. In EOT Hardcore, this of course was the staple amongst all the hardcore players who had it. It really lets you put in the work on the boss, and it is just ever so slightly better than the Light Room, but I would say it's just barely in the S tier in my opinion. The rest of the runes in the S tier are very, very deserving of it. And the first one I'm going to mention is going to be the rune of the Azure. So Azure is still a solo king. With this thing, if you're using Havoc, Mooncutters, and Calamity, you're going to be shredding bosses. The other skills it affects is Swordstorm and Blaze Slash, but these two skills are not nearly as good nowadays as the Mooncutter Havoc Calamity combo. It's basically using, it's basically like the Lunar and Solar Room, but just way, way buffed. Its Mooncutters are massive, they have huge range, they go through mobs and bosses. 
And if you're soloing and you want a safe strategy, I highly recommend you go for this thing. Even in team play, it can still be very effective nowadays. Like, there is absolutely nothing bad about it. It does so much damage still, and I'm surprised this thing is still as good as it is today. Are there slightly better options in this for team play or solo play? Yes, but this is like nearing the very tip of the iceberg in terms of DPS output. The next S tier rune we will talk about is of course the party rune. The party rune is the best support rune in the entire game, there is no question about it. I'm not really doing it justice in the background like usual since it's supportive, using it alone isn't really that great. But uh, basically, it affects Menacing Xiao, uh, it summons a Disco Ball to lower enemy defenses, so it's basically like a lure jab. And then also, Cloak of Light becomes a dodge chance for all allies, the only rune in the game to do that. And then Mending Sword basically becomes a Disco Floor that heals your allies and gives them a damage increase. So, this is basically like the Life Rune and Silencer combined into one amazing support rune. Ever since this thing came out, this rune became a staple for every single team play type raid. If you're doing a team raid, make sure you have a party rune in there. It is so good. It is by far the best support rune in the entire game. Because if you have this thing comboing with Silencer, and if you have this thing with life runes, your soul rune player's health will always be max. And plus the boss is going to be just taking so much damage. And then that dodge ability can be very effective as well for keeping your team alive. So there is two more S runes remaining that I'm going to cover. I did do full breakdown videos on these runes recently. So I'll put those in the description and I'm going to cover them pretty quick. So the first one is going to be the Rune of the Insanity from the recent Halloween event. The Rune of the Insanity is amazing in solo play and is still amazing in team play. It is just so good. If you don't have players that are healing you, I would always use Insanity over the Rune of the Soul. In my opinion, it is just slightly better than Azure. However, there is an argument between which one is better for solo. It affects Heaven Splitter, Piercing Strike, and Havoc. Havoc becomes 25% greater, so by far the best combo with this thing is Enraged Havoc with Calamity, Shout, and Heaven Splitter. You just do stupid DPS with this thing. This rune is fantastic, absolutely amazing. Never let anyone tell you that it isn't good in team play, because in team play it is still very effective if you don't have anyone to heal you. So now we are approaching our final rune of the video, and that's going to be the rune of the Lost Soul, which is of course an S rating, but it is a little bit complicated. This rune is only effective if you're going for the highest health possible, because its main ability being Flurry, uh, basically it does more damage depending on how much health you have and your max health. The other thing it affects is Menacing Shout, but that's pretty forgettable, it's not a very good ability with this rune. So the combo you're going to use with this is Flurry, probably Mending Sword or Blessing, and then Calamity. And then, I will say in solo play it is trash, do not use this alone, it is not effective, but in team play it is by far the best DPS rune in the entire game. You can spam Flurry, it has a 1 second cooldown, and then if you have a life rune and a party rune with you, you will always have health, and then even if you have an egg rune with you as well, you're not going to be taking damage, you're going to be constantly getting healed, and then you can just spam the flurry, and then the higher the health you have, the more damage it does. So in team play, this thing is beyond an S tier. It is the best DPS rune in the game if you have a team that knows how to keep you alive. However, if you're soloing with this thing, it's like a B, a B or an A maybe. Soloing, it is not the best. Anyways guys, that is my updated and new rune tier list video comment down below if you guys agree with my picks let me know what you would change and let me know if there's anything i just got beyond wrong like always thank you very much for watching my video and stay tuned for more bye